that winning cures everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, college football preview fans? It's Winning Cures Everything. I am Gary. And I'm Chris. I said that weird, didn't I? I am Gary. I guess I am legend. Like the I Will think, Smith movie. I think it's okay. I, I think mean, that, that one, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And you can follow the show at Winning Cures. You can also get us on Facebook, on YouTube, on Periscope, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or you can just make it easy on yourself and go to winningcureseverything.com because we got links to everything over there. Make it very, very simple on yourself. We're going to go through the AAC East today, the American Athletic Conference in the last season that the UConn Huskies will be in the league. I don't know that anybody's going to miss them. <laughs> and Well, UConn fans might, like, I think they're gonna miss being in it. I just at least the the five football fans that are actually out there. This is my favorite conference in all of college football. Oh yeah, I, I know. mean I've made this so so clear. If, if people watched last season, I love I love the American. Yeah, it's well, I mean, so it's, good. It's very patriotic. It, uh, I mean, it's not even <laughs> you're about like I'm that. not even worried like, about you, that. I'm you just... could have called it whatever you wanted. It's just these teams are fun. They're, yes. Way better than people in the country give them credit for. I agree. I mean, they with are, that. and some of them I think are going to take big steps forward. You're going to see my records, and none of them are going to be like you know twelve and zero like UCF. But I think that's because everybody beats up on one another. Yeah, everybody's good, and I don't think that that's a knock on your conference. No, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think everybody's pretty good. I really like this conference a lot. The show brought to you by BetNow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50. That is W-I-N-N-I-N-G-5-0. For those that wanted to make fun of my southern accent, you can bite me. WINNING50 is the, <laughs> is the promo code. Uh, I had people tell me that they couldn't understand the promo code when I was reading it. That's why I, Yeah. So I've started spelling it out much easier that way. I can enunciate, I guess, letters more clearly. Either way, you speak better than I do. So. Winning fifty is the promo code. It's better that you're doing it. You can me. also read it at the bottom of the screen if you're watching on video, or it'll be in the description on the podcast. Speaking of the podcast, leave some nice reviews. Tell everybody you know about it. Call your granny. Tell her to subscribe on her Apple iPhone. Hook us up. We want everybody listening to this. And when you subscribe and you leave a review, it helps put us in front of even more people. Join the community. Tell more people about it. We would appreciate it. Let's fire into it. Betnow.eu, by the way. Go check them out. Great sports book. Great uh, website. The layout's great. Everything about it is great. Literally. They're we great. love this place. They treat us well. They will treat you well. They make betting simple. Betnow.eu. Let's fire up. Come on. Cincinnati Bearcats. 11-2 and two last year. 6-2 and two in the conference. Uh, Luke Fickle, ahead of schedule guy. a little bit. Love this guy. Seven returning starters on offense, seven on defense. Number 51, most experienced team in the country coming back. Number eight, though, in the conference. Year three of Luke Fickle era probably will not be as successful as year two. The schedule set up perfectly last year. Correct. Uh, quarterback Desmond uh, Ritter, is uh, he's back along with a plethora of school players. Everyone but the right side of the line is back, and I think that Michigan transfer James Hudson is probably going to help that. Uh, defense was number eight scoring defense in the country, number 11 total defense, and they should be really good again. Uh, they replaced both all-league uh, uh, tackles and defensive end uh, Fitz. You remember Fitz? Um, that's, that's a lot to replace up front, right? Now, you can tell the difference. Like between 2016 and 2018, there was a shift in this team in the size and the physicality. The team is way bigger. They are more talented now. Like you can, you know how when you see a team at one point and you're like, ugh, you know, it's like, okay, like they got some dudes, I guess. And then you see them again and you're like, oh, yeah, like something happened. Like I don't know what happened, but something happened. They made the same dudes. Luke Fickle went and got some dudes. Yeah, I, I did not like the Luke Fickle hire taking over for Jim Tressel back in Ohio State. Well, I, I mean they they were kind of in a bad spot. Right? I know that, 
And and I know he he was trying to help out his alma mater, and I think it it hurt his resume, in my opinion. I really like him here in Cincinnati, staying in the state. He knows how to recruit that state. He is getting I think that, some dudes. I think that that uh, that Ohio State thing and actually helped really, him. You think so? I think so. I think that one year of him like being thrown into it, and he had to lead. Like I think sometimes well, I, that brings out the best in people. I don't think he has a problem leading. I, it, it's no. it's not his leadership. It's just that was a big big job for a guy that's never had. Oh yeah, a head coaching job like that. Well, they they needed somebody like him so that they could well, bring they, in Urban afterwards. They, yeah, right? they needed an Ohio State guy, which he was. Yep. Um, if you look back at that coaching staff, he he brought his boy Vrabel in. Vrabel, if, if Vrabel's look, now our Titans coach. Like, if you look at <laughs> worked uh, out pretty well for both of them. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. But if if you look at that situation, like just just going back to the like, I'm not the guy to uh, take up for Ohio State at all, mm-hmm. but. What Jim Trestle got fired for is ridiculous. Today, in <laughs> today's in college today's, football, yeah. Jim Trestle should be murdering people for for how he was treated yeah. at Ohio State. It was it was bad. That that was not a scandal. No, that was no. that was not. A, I That's mean, yeah. the most ridiculous thing I've seen anybody get yeah. fired for ever. And that dude had like coming off winning the national championship a couple years. Yeah, ago. it was pretty ridiculous. All anyway. right, so Cincinnati schedule. A lot more difficult this year. Way harder. Uh, I think they get the win against UCLA to start things off. I do too. Um, hey, we both. But I, and I don't really like, like I said, place and wins and losses. Yeah. But, but you I, like that one. I like that one. I've got uh, a loss at Ohio State, and then I've got a loss at home to Miami, Ohio. Okay. So you and I had actually talked about that. Um, at Marshall, I think they win. I think they beat UCF at home because I think that is going to be a friggin' Super Bowl for them. Uh, at Houston, though, the week after, I think that's a loss. Uh, Tulsa is a win. At East Carolina is a win. UConn's a win. At South Florida is a win. Temple is a win. And then I think on the short week, Thanksgiving week, they lose at Memphis. That puts them eight and four, six and two in the conference. I have them eight and four as well. That's awesome. I, I, but I, like I said, I have a lot of teams in this nine and three and eight and four in this conference, yeah. and it's not a knock on them. It is. They are just beating one another up. I have no idea which games they're going to win and which games they're going to lose in conference. But there's going to be some cannibalism from them, Memphis, UCF, Houston, and USF. I, I think those five teams are really good. Yeah, and I, I don't mean to leave anybody else out. There's other teams in here I like. There's other teams that but, are building but up. But I, yeah. I think those five teams are, are marketably better. I could I could see that. And they can play with big boys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. East Carolina Pirates, three and nine last year, one and seven, four returning starters on offense, seven on defense, number forty eight most experienced team in the country, number seven in the conference. New head coach Mike Houston. He was eighty and twenty five at James Madison. That's not too shabby. Uh but this is going to be a years long rebuild. That's I'm right. fairly certain. It's Look, the guy the guy can coach. But he's got a lot of work to do here. Uh, quarterback Holton Allers, Allers, uh, he provided a spark for the offense last year. But uh, Houston does not want him to run as much as he did. I mean, the kid got hurt last year because of the running. Uh, new defense coordinator Bob Trot is implementing a four-two-five set. Uh, hopefully, that will improve their number one hundred and one total defense from last year. It, there's quite a bit of experience returning. Uh, and an easier to navigate schedule is going to help them improve, but I don't think they improve that much. I've got them at four and eight. I've got them one and seven in conference. Uh, they set it up fairly well, right? You know, they've got Gardner Webb, William and Mary at Old Dominion, um, at UConn. Like those are those are the four wins that I've got, and then you lose everything else at NC State at Navy. Temple at Central Florida, South Florida, Cincinnati at SMU, and then Tulsa to end the thing. I think four and eight would be pretty good for this. It's just, it's such a weird thing to think. I got the same thing at four and eight, but it's so weird to see a team that we think can start off four and oh, and then just, we just don't see another win on the. On the books. Well, I mean, for them, like they start at NC State, so I mean, they'll start with a loss. Well, okay, I, I can't. But, I, I but they, never they could open up three and two, and then you got one win the rest of the way. Yeah, it's like, man, at three and two, you're thinking, all right, bowl game. Like if we can just win three more, we can get to a bowl. 
and you're just and not I just get there. I don't see it. You're not get there. It it wouldn't surprise me if they finished three and nine again. Yeah, I mean that just wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me either. Eight. I think they can get that extra win, but I don't. I think Mike Houston is a good enough coach. They could find a way to five and seven. Mm. I think they I they could I find don't... a win in there because they their offense last need, year was I need not to see the them problem. Improve. No, you're right. It's not the issue, but I just think this is a tough call. I think the schedule's tough. Yeah, the, oh, it's absolutely tough. Uh, let's move on. Temple, the Temple Owls, eight and five last year, seven and one in the conference, which is crazy to think about. They went eight and five, but they went seven and one in the league. Their only loss was to UCF, and that was a fantastic game. They they're they're a really good team. They're a tough yeah. team, man. I left them out of my like. Five that I love, I I, I don't know why. Well, I th- well, because we're waiting to see what happens with um, with Rod Carey, right? We'll see. True. And so, um, look, they were eight and five last year, seven and one in the conference. Seven offensive starters back. That's pretty good. Six back on defense. Number four most experienced in the conference, but number forty four in the country. They lost head coach Jeff Collins, then they hired and then lost head coach Manny Diaz. Yep. Oh, they finally took Northern Illinois coach Rod Carey. They they are usually the guys that hire the defensive coordinator guy. That's right. But they this like time they defense. They like tough. They said, "Screw it. We have had too many head coaches that leave from here and then go to bigger jobs. We're just going to take somebody else's head coach. Yeah, like make it easy on ourselves." So they took Rod Carey uh, from Northern Illinois. Quarterback Anthony Russo. He took over in Game Three. Last year, you remember they lost to like Villanova and somebody else. Uh, but man, they they did not look good in their first two games. And then he went seven and three as a starter, and four out of five of their offensive line return. Uh, but the offensive line does lack depth this year. That's that's going to be a concern. Linebacker unit best in the AAC, uh, probably one of the top 20, 25 in the country, at which they are every year. Temple just breeds these guys. Uh, four two five set. Um, let's see. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It, it, I'm looking at uh, how many they've got coming back for the front four. Uh, sorry, not many starters back uh, in the front four and the secondary, but uh, they do have a lot of upperclassmen, so that's good. Uh, definite transition situation. A bowl should definitely be attainable. I think so. I got them seven and five. Seven and five. I think they regress one game. Yeah. And it's, I mean, they won, it was their bowl game that they won last year, right? Didn't they win their bowl game? No, they finished eight and five. They finished eight and five, but did they go eight and four? Oh, oh they finished eight and four in the regular season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, think they lost the um, I got them beating Bucknell. I got them losing to Maryland. A win at Buffalo. I think they're going to humiliate Georgia Tech. I think those players uh, are going to want to get back at Jeff Collins. This is a rare situation where the guy has to bring his Power Five team back to. The G5 school. Like, that's that's rare. So I think that they're going to beat up on Georgia Tech. I think they win at East Carolina. That puts them out at 4-1 and one in the first five. But then after that, look, Memphis at SMU, UCF at USF, Tulane at Cincy, and UConn. Like, obviously, they get the UConn win. Uh, I've only got them beating SMU, SMU. and was, Tulane. I was going to say. And then... I just I'm always wary to chalk up wins at Tulane. Well, just, but this this one's in Philly. I, I understand, but, but against, the triple yeah. option's a triple option. Well, but it's, see, if that's you're the re- thing. If you're ready for it, you're they ready. They ain't for running it. the triple option. They're 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 doing one of those weird things. He's trying to move more modern, and that's one of the reasons I don't know if I like him a lot this year. But but we'll talk about it. Maybe I need to change my Tulane pick. Then. We'll talk about it in the next division. Not a fan. Um, but yeah, so Temple, I got seven and five. You got him seven and five. I got him seven and five. Okay, that sounds about reasonable. Uh, let's move on. Central Florida. This is the team everybody's here for anyway, right? Nah, maybe not. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> 12 and 1 last year, 8 and 0 in the conference. Two undefeated seasons back to back. Come on, man. Well, last year wasn't undefeated. Well, before the bowl. Game. I know, I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Regular season. Uh, yeah, 8 0 in the conference, seven offensive starters returning, five on defense, number six most experienced in the conference, number 46 in the country. Head coach Josh Heupel, he kept the magic going with Mackenzie Melton and them. Uh, but then they have the injury, and they lose to LSU in the Fiesta Bowl. And now they are bringing in Notre Dame quarterback Brandon Wimbush as a transfer. He's going to battle sophomore quarterback Daryl Mack Jr. They got a ton of talent. 
They got more talent than anybody else in the league. And that's saying something because this is really it's a good conference. It's a good conference. It's a the really defense good conference. Returns a bulk of the secondary, but not much else. Defensive line was number one eighteen against the run in two thousand eighteen. They'll probably get better on that this year. They brought in some dudes. Uh schedule this year. It is not nearly as kind as it has been the last two Oh, no, seasons. they went out and they got, some, they got some people to play. Yeah, they well, they got some people to play, but they also, where the road games and whatnot set well, yeah, up. Yeah, it just happens it's, to fall. It's That's just right. a little different. This True. year, we're not going to get, like, the last two seasons we've had four games between Memphis and UCF. That ain't happening this year because they don't play in the regular season. Uh, look, I've got them going 10-2 and two this year. I got them 7-1 and one in the conference. I've got them winning this division. Um. And here's how this works out, right? So Cincinnati, I've got beating them. Okay. Right? We already talked about that. Yep. I've got them losing at home to Stanford and then winning at Pitt the week after. I think the same thing. But then I got them beating everybody else. And Cincinnati, I think, loses at Houston and at Memphis. So that's two conference losses for Cincy and only one for Central Florida, even though they lose at Cincy. You feel me? Yep. All right. So I've got them 10 and 2. And I think that's pretty good. Yes, 10, ten I wins think that's is pretty, remarkable. But can you imagine? 10 wins is remarkable. If, if they were to lose two games by Friday, October the 4th, can you imagine what that fan base will be? That it, They have been if one of, so if, unbelievable. If, if one of those teams is Stanford and they have a road win over a Power 5 team, I mean, I know Pitt's not like a juggernaut, but they're also not, you know, like a bum. Well, I'm saying if you, not if like you lose at we'd be, Cincy. We'd be Rucker. Because the last two years, they've been undefeated in conference. Right? I mean, undefeated regular season in yeah. national champs in 2017. But you lose to Stanford at home in the biggest game on the schedule. Correct. And then you lose at Cincinnati in the first real conference game. I mean, it. Uh, how does the fan base react? They well, that's, haven't had to deal with this in that, years. I don't think. I don't think you can just say we finally lost a game. Oh, let's just throw in the towel. No, let's I all agree go with home, you. guys. Let's go home. We finally lost a conference game. Well, let's quit playing football. We're not going to support the team <laughs> anymore. No, I'm with you. I'm I, with I just you. don't I think that's realistic. Like, what are you talking about? Josh Heupel was a really good coach, by the way. I forgot. I don't know how I forgot this, but I totally forgot that he learned and coached under Leach. You didn't remember that? No. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how I knew him, where I knew him. It's from Oklahoma when, when Leach yeah. was there. Back 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 in the day under Leach as a quarterback coach. Yeah, he, he He's legit. Like if he can He's gonna he's he's a he's not gonna be. He is a good coach. He has got two. And this quarter- is a really good team. They've well, got a lot of talent. Here's the difference though. Yeah, the team's got a lot of talent. He's got two quarterbacks that ain't real good at throwing the football. He'll figure it out. That's I figure they, he you will. You know what? They got neither too much talent these, not to. Neither, Brandon Wimbush hadn't had a quarterback's coach work with him the way Hypel's going to work with him. Sure. Hypel will get more out of him. If he's a starter, Hypel will get more out of him than anybody coaching Notre Dame ever could have. Yeah, you're probably right. He's just a better coach than those guys. You are probably right. All right. UConn, we got two more. The UConn Huskies, 1-11 last year, 0-8 in the conference, six guys back on offense, nine starters back on defense. Number 69, most experienced team in the country, number 11 in the conference, though. Randy Edsel's second stint has pretty much been a disaster. He is 4-20 since he came back. Defense is the main culprit. Of course, the defense set FBS records with 617 yards per game allowed and 50.4 points per game. They were, last year, the number 123 uh, most inexperienced team in the uh, in the country. This year, of course, number 69, so that's a little better. Uh, the offense has got their seventh offensive coordinator in seven years. They lost quarterback David Pendle and their top four receivers, so where they were actually able to put up points in some games last year, might be a little more difficult to do that this year. Uh, how much does this school actually care about football? Does Edsel have any kind of magic left whatsoever? And I wrote, actually, like I did my my note-taking and whatnot okay. and wrote down this, how much does this school actually care about football? 
before they decided that they were bouncing bouncing to the Big East. I found that funny. That doesn't have a football conference. That's all I'm saying. Um, I don't think that they care. Like, I, I think I think they're just done. Right? You know what's strange? If you were to look up UConn's football locker rooms, they just went through a massive renovation. Yeah, I know. To help recruiting. And they look really good. Yeah. And, and they spent a lot of dough. Somebody cares. Somebody cares enough to stroke a big check. Yeah, you're right about that. That guy got to feel like an ass right now. <laughs> I got him. I got him one and eleven. The only win is uh, over Wagner to start yeah, things off. One and eleven. They won't sniff another win. No, I think you're they, probably it, right. It won't be within double digits of anybody the rest of the season. All right, take two. We we had to chop the video, but now we're getting into the South Florida Bulls. I am excited about this. Me too. All right, one of the teams I love in this in this conference, definitely in this division. Now, I don't love them. I think they'll be a little better than last year. Okay. But I think a lot of that has to do with uh well look, let's just let's go through the notes. Seven and six last year, three and five. Returning starters, they got nine on offense, six on defense, number thirty two in the country in experience returning, number two in the conference. So that's that's all good, right? Pretty big. Charlie Strong, seventeen and eight in his first two seasons. They started seven and zero last year. And then finished the year 0-6. That's tough. There was talent and a little bit of the injury bug, but not much. It was mostly because of, like, that team was just not disciplined towards the end of the season for whatever reason. Uh, quarterback Blake Barnett, key weapon for new offensive coordinator Kerwin Bell, who, for those that keep track of these things, if you have not heard of that name, uh, Division II national title winning Valdosta State head coach is now the OC at South Florida. Uh, that should show you the difference in... Uh, finances. That's right? right. Like South Florida's offensive coordinator makes that more much more money than a Division II national championship coach. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. crazy. Uh, number 95 that's scoring fine. defense, number 104 total defense. New de- uh, defense coordinator Brian Jean Mary. He spent the last nine years under Strong as a linebackers coach. Uh, so Strong bringing in people that he's comfortable with that he knows to, to keep this thing going. Charlie Strong's defensive SP plus rankings. All right. Now, this is pretty crazy. Uh, seven and six at Louisville in 2010, they were number 27 in defense. 2011, they were seven and six again, number 22 in defense. Then he goes 11 and two with the number 49 SP plus efficiency defense. That's right. Number nine most efficient defense in 2013, that's when he went 12 and one. Then he goes to Texas. All right, six and seven with the number 12 defense. Then he's got uh, five and seven with the number sixty defense. Five and seven with the number fifty defense. That was sixty six zero. Yeah, six zero and then five zero the next year, um, and then ten and two his first season in South Florida with the number twenty nine defense, and then number eighty with the uh, seven and six record last year. So his records are all over the place. Like his defense doesn't have to be good for them to win. That's right. In some cases. When the defense is good but the offense is bad, they can still be good, or sometimes they just suck, period. That's right. I don't know what to make of Charlie Strong. There is no identity, right? I've always defended him, and I don't know why, and the more I look at his resume, I just wonder, what am I defending? Yeah. And, I, and I don't know the answer to that, but I do like him. Like, I've wait, always it, liked him. Obviously, he's a high-character guy, right? That's right. Like We, we believe that. But, but but when you have the mistakes you have at the end of the year last year that are discipline issues, and then we're not talking about discipline off the field, getting in trouble, no, it's but just, just like fumbling the football, offsides, like penalties that are that are all about... Correctable. Is your, yes. Is your team focused? Is your team playing you know, with some pride and, and, and actually... Paying attention to the details, I I just I just like him. I think he's a really good coach, and I just feel I don't know like if the numbers I feel like Texas suggest that. But part of me just wants to blame <laughs> Texas because I don't like the school, and I just think. But with the they season broken. like last season, it's like okay. Now a lot of it could have been that they were pretty young last year, right? It, That's so right. The year before they lost a ton of seniors. So, it, because you remember us talking before about if this, like, if you're going to jump, you better jump. That's right. But he didn't, and here we are. Now, they do get a lot of experience back this year. Uh, I've got them at 7-5 and five this year. Okay. Um, uh, losses, basically bookend losses. 
like two losses to start the year with Wisconsin and at Georgia Tech, and then a loss uh, at home to Cincinnati, uh, at home to Memphis, and then at UCF to close the season, and then winning everything else in between. So I've got a mate in four, and it wouldn't surprise me if they win the Georgia Tech game. I know, that and, wouldn't surprise and, me at and, all. And just, and I don't, like, the, there's nobody really on the schedule outside of Wisconsin realistically, and I don't know that the way Wisconsin played last year that that's such a – like they realistically could win all these games. Now, I'm not yeah. saying they're going to go undefeated. i got a mate in four. But but I don't think anybody is so head and shoulders better than them. If they bring their A game and the other team is not ready, they can win all these games. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and so, I don't know. Like I said, they're one of my eight – I've got a lot of eight and four, nine and three, ten and two in this conference because – and I don't think it's a negative on anybody – in this conference. I just think they're going to knock each other off. I can believe that. All right. So that's going to wrap up the AAC East. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. We've got all the other previews up there. Go to betnow.eu. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.